Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Veterans Rides. I'm your host, Dwayne Moore. On today's episode, we're gonna be speaking with our guest, Jim Wickstead. We're gonna be talking about his car, which you see right behind me. It is a 1991 Suzuki Cappuccino. It's, it's a really big car, as you can tell. And of course, at the end of the episode, we're gonna be taking our first spin. <clears throat> so a little bit about our guest. Um, he is currently on active duty with the United States Navy, and he has been in for 11 years. During that time, he has done five overseas deployments. The deployment to year ratio is kind of high, but that's the way his career has gone. He is currently an E6, which means he's a first class petty officer. So a little bit about his rate or job in the Navy. <clears throat> he is a aviation electro electronics technicians. And in his words, what they do is they work on anything on the aircraft that beeps, squeaks, talks, gawks, and uh, you know, so it's any, the, the airplane has a lot of electronic components and they fix uh, those components on the airplane. He also has a social media account, which is Kawaii Racing. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about this car and what he does with it, uh, you can follow him on social media. It's his Instagram page, and you can find that Instagram information at the bottom of this video description. So that's a little bit about our guest. Let's go ahead and welcome him to the show. Jim, come on down. Thank you so much for being in the show. Thanks for having me, it's been fun. Hey, so uh, I always start off with this question, but what made you get this car? So when I was stationed in Japan, I needed a car that was gonna be a reliable daily driver, good on gas mileage, not so much for groceries, but you know, still kind of fun to drive around as well. So I looked into getting this K car here. It's about $4,000 at the time, three different colors of red. It's got a new coat of paint on it now, but it was just, you know, it was, it was the financially responsible option at the time. <laughs> I get that, but it, it, it's, you, you've changed it quite a bit since then. Oh. <laughs> um, so when people are stationed in Japan, uh, they, they do bring cars back, but normally it's like the GTRs and super things like that. So what possessed you to bring this car back to the States? So I was thinking about that and I had this car. I enjoyed the hell out of it when I was there and I had a car that was in storage in the States. So I was thinking, I'll keep that as the daily. I'll bring this home as the fun weekend project car kind of thing. And this is the perfect location to have something that can be like a hard top like this and the roof will come off and I can go full open roadster, full convertible on it. And it's just beautiful weather all the time. So it's great. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, being down here in San Diego, sunny San Diego, the sun's always out and you can kind of take that for granted. So yeah, I can, I can definitely see why you brought it back. Um, so this car is smaller than a uh, Miata. Um, with it being that small, do you get scared driving it around? You know, cause we, we got these big 2,500 pickup trucks here on the freeway. It's like, do you, do you get scared about that kind of stuff? No, I don't. Actually, like, well, yes, it is a little tiny car. It's it's very attention grabbing. It's this nice blue color, and it's also got a very loud exhaust. So if people don't see it, they hear it. You know, they're just driving along, wondering why there's a swarm of bees on the road, and they look over and they say, "Oh, there's a car over there." You know, and I usually get, you know, I get the attention. I get people give me room. They take pictures, whatever. It's a nice little crowd pleaser. So it it's not scary at all to drive. Nice. Uh, that's good to hear that you feel safe driving it because uh, I don't know if I were you, I, I, don't, I would have feel safe driving it around on these freeways. Hey, uh, so at this time, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the vehicle. All right. This is my car. As I mentioned earlier, this is a K car or as they call a KG Dosha car in Japan. Uh, this was a option of car that was offered in post-war Japan is a more affordable vehicle for families to have. They're good on gas mileage, they're really light, they're fuel efficient, and they had to have spurt, uh, certain restrictions on them. They could only have a 600cc engine at the largest, no more than 64 horsepower. And the sizes, while they're metric uh, in feet, it is about 11 feet long, five feet wide, and six and a half feet tall at the most. And then at the front of the car here, you can see I've got custom headlights they're one-off. I did these myself with the D-Line, custom halos, and some extra added goodies in them as well. All right, this is my wheel and tire configuration I have. These are SSR SP1Rs, 15 by eight plus nine in the front, and 15 by nine plus nine in the back. I've got Kaiser KR20 uh, 195 45 15s on the fronts here, and the rears are a an all-season 195 50. 15. 
Uh, for the pads and rotors, I've got just OEM spec Project Moo pads, and the rotors are a Dixel slotted and dimpled uh, rotor. All right, in the engine bay here, we have a 660cc engine with a turbo strapped to it. This is a Yahoo Auctions Japan special, basically got it for 500 bucks so that I could throw it in the car and ship it home. I have a custom catch can set up here for my oil catch can. I also have an upgraded turbo. It's hiding down there somewhere. And my intake here is aftermarket going to a, well, a, a dryer hose modification. So I get a little bit more clean air to the intake. So for the interior, I have a custom micro suede wrapped interior with Toyoshima Craft door cards and a dash cover. For the dash display, I have an electroluminescent overlay so I can see daytime, nighttime, how fast I'm going or where the engine is at. I also have a air conditioning panel out of a Suzuki Lopin and an aftermarket head unit right here. As I mentioned before, the roof is also removable. It comes off in three pieces. By accessing this latch, you just pull this button down and pull the latch down and it unlatches. And once your roof panels are unlatched, it's just as simple as you grab the panel, you lift it up and remove it from the car. And say this isn't open convertible enough for you, you can actually put the back glass and roll bar of this car down into the body as well. You come down here, you release this little latch, red button, you push it, swing it down. And then there's a lever right here. You move the safety over and you lift the latch up and it releases the roof and down to the body it goes. All right, for the back end of the car, we have a Toyoshima Craft carbon fiber duckbill trunk. And for the exhaust, I mentioned earlier, it's all straight pipe. This is a cat deleted, muffler deleted, 2.5 inches back to a uh, four inch tip exhaust. All right, so it's my favorite time of the show. Let's go ahead and uh, take this car for a spin. you've ever uh, taken it for a drive? Uh, well, when I was first out in Japan, I think the farthest I drove it was about three hours away to the racetrack. Oh, but since really? getting it, Yeah, like straight, three hours straight. But since getting it back stateside, I think the farthest I drove was like maybe Carlsbad, so about an hour north and back. And it handles the highway speeds and everything fine. It definitely feels like it's up there in the RPMs and she's probably getting a little warm, but she's put down and held up just fine for all of my driving needs. What modifications do you want to do to the car to get the horsepower up? Or is that something is that something you're interested in? Uh, yeah, actually. So I mentioned that I have the upgraded turbo. The stock turbo puts out a maximum of 14 PSI. This new turbo will put out a maximum of 21 PSI. So once I get a standalone ECU involved, I'll be able to turn the boost up and eventually make the conversion to 85 probably get closer to the 150 160 horsepower range a good 10 to 1 power to weight ratio should be respectable hey man you don't need 150 horsepower that's enough all right that's enough <laughs> this 80 or whatever it is now seems like a lot of fun too like, uh... 
So what, what is this car stock? I, I, I don't know if I asked that already. Uh, stock, the K car is limited to a maximum of 64 horsepower. 64 horsepower. Um, that's not a lot for American roads. <laughs> no, it's not. It's about enough to get up to the speed limit. That's about all you get. Yeah. <laughs> this car probably gets a lot of attention. Was that something you knew coming into bringing into the States or was that something you were surprised by? Because I don't know if that's your goal or not, you know? Actually, that wasn't my goal. I just wanted to bring something fun home. <laughs> and it's like the added bonus that everybody else enjoys it just as much as I do, you know? It's been it's been great. I get lots of questions because I'll take this to cars and coffee, car meets, stuff like that. And I always get people walking over me or walking over to me and asking, like, what is it? Or complimenting it, or asking, you know, how much does it weigh? How much did you pay? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, because you don't strike me as the kind of guy that is uh, necessarily one of those guys that would buy something to get attention. You know, you seem like you're pretty chill, so that's why I had to ask that. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> All right, hey, um, that concludes this episode of Veterans Rides. We were never going to capture everything that Jim does with the vehicle. He does have an Instagram account. I um, highly encourage you to follow him and see the adventures that he has with his car. I, I follow him. He, like uh, he, he was saying, he goes to... Uh, to these car shows and I'd love to go with him to see uh, what that's about and you know I just want to say thank you for letting me drive your car let, trusting me to drive your car uh, this car is a challenge to drive it's probably the most challenging car I've driven on the show I can't, I can't see driving a car any more challenging than this I mean it's right-hand drive it's small it's very short uh, very firm suspension but just like always if you guys like what you see Leave a comment below, hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.